All right, so uh, yeah, I finished doing the washing and everything that I kind of wanted to do. I told you I wouldn't have a lot of time because I was expecting a family friend to come here and uh, move these bins for me. So we are about 20 miles away from where we were washing the drill, give or take. So we don't really have to take them too far. Just gotta take them about 20 miles. Then we'll drop one off, try to get it straight. Getting them all lined up on the new bin pad, that takes about as long as grabbing them and moving them there. Well, Mike, where the heck are you now? I'm in my father-in-law's yard, and uh, he was gracious enough to allow me to put some bins here until I was a little bit more coordinated, and now I'm getting a little bit more coordinated. At least in my mind, but in all reality, I'm still very, very far behind. But uh, we're going to grab these bins and move them up there and uh, hope that they don't get blown over before we can anchor them down into the ground. That's right. you got to be anchored into the ground. Otherwise, you take a big wind or a storm and they're going to go, woo, and they're going to go rolling across uh, the field. So I'm going to zoom in on these here. Uh, those are going to literally cup the bin and there's carpet on there and rubber underneath the carpet. That way uh, we don't scratch the bin. And what they're doing is they're just throwing some chains around those legs, I think in uh, two different spots. And just like that, it's starting to come over. So yep, there's the chains, see? One, two, three, four, two on each leg, lifting on two legs. Oh sorry, yeah, two legs. Two chains per leg. Boy, I was really struggling there, don't judge me. <laughs> and eventually gravity is going to plop it right into that top piece where the carpet is. There it goes, just like that. I like that he brought uh, some young help there. That's how you, that's the age where like I was when you learn how to work. That's awesome. Oh yeah, I should note that um, he's using chains, but uh, a lot of guys also use four inch straps. Straps will leave a little bit more paint on, but you'll still have that big four inch strap mark uh, wherever that strap went. So either way, you're gonna have to do a little touch up with some spray paint. And just like that, guys, it's down. Oh, sorry. Let's move it. All right, we're about to take off. Throwing my lights on, let's rock and roll. Might be a little tight getting out of these trees. They all came through here, but uh, once the trees get leaves on, they get heavy and the branches kind of hang down. So we're just gonna scoot ahead here just a little bit. Oh, we can look back down here. Yeah, I can't remember if I told you that uh, our family friend there who's moving those bins is actually named Larry and his, uh, I think his grandson, Jesse. So these are 16 foot diameter bins. I think they're 1620s, I think. Maybe they're 1624s, might be 1624s. I don't remember. There's a branch. Little scratchy scratch there. Minor. Perfect, I was only worried about that one evergreen. See, they all came through here. All right, we're ready to go.
He is about, I don't know, half a mile back there. It's not very clear. I thought it coming clearer than that. There it is. Hmm. We're only doing 20 kilometers an hour here on this gravel because we don't want to road rash anything. I could run this fast, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, maybe I can. I'm a lot of shape, but... <laughs> All right, so now we're on the highway. I'm going to stay about a mile in front of them. Sorry, I had to put my phone in its mount here, so uh, that way we're hands-free. Safety first camp around this operation. So we're gonna go through the Muscogan Reserve. I love the sign to the right. It says, drug dealers will no longer be tolerated. <laughs> I always laugh at that every time I see it. I'm like, they'll be no longer tolerated, but they were tolerated in the past, I guess. But uh, not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> I always laugh. It's the little things in life that gets, keeps you going. It's the little things. Just like that, we have arrived. Just like that, we've arrived. So the tedious part is trying to get these things lined right up. Everybody is different. Some people are just flop and drop and uh, call it good. And other people are like, oh my goodness, you got to be within one centimeter. Uh, I'm kind of in between. I am a little bit fussy, but at the same time, I'm not going to burn off a half a day trying to inch it around. And up we go. So we're not quite square to the pad. and we're So what we're going to do, we're just going to flop it down and then we'll shimmy it and move it around. Uh, and then he's gonna get going, turn and burn for the next bin, and then uh, I will assist and help, and I'll use my tractor to, uh, or the skid steer actually, probably to move the bin around and fine tune it. Oh yeah, we're definitely going to be a little crooked here. But that's not the end of the world. And just like that, the bin is down. Done deal. Let's untie these chains and go grab another one. So they're turning and burning. We have this uh, Kubota SVL 75-2. It's uh, my father-in-law's. It's a pretty sweet machine. I'm used to case uh, skid steers. 
So we're going to hook a chain and we're going to tug it and move it and shape it and move it and pick it up. No, we're not going to pick it up, but we're going to try to get it all somewhat, somewhat halfway decently lined up. Once it's just about completely not lined up, we're going to call it good. <laughs> so the, dis the trick is, is to get the same space between these bins. That's one trick. And then you got to be square and then you want to be center or, you know, that's, that's what they claim anyway. So, all right, I got to get to work here. So we're in the skid steer here. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of a twist. Okay. So we grabbed the chain and we stuck it on this furthest leg and we want to just kind of give it a little bit of a rotation. And if we pull the whole bin over too much, no big deal. Uh, we'll flush up all these teeth right on there and we'll nicely push it back. Um, if we push it back too far, well, then we'll have to go around the other side and do the same. And that's basically what we're doing. So rotating, we're hooking chains around legs and we're just giving it a little pull and whichever way we need to go. And then we will uh, push on it whichever direction we need to go. So let's just... Okay. You don't want to go too much. You're trying to get this here square with the pad. Uh, it needs to come a little bit more, I can tell the top in there and we'll just give it a little bit more give it a little bit more goose Come. Just a little bit. Mike, how are you at lining stuff up? Oh, pretty crappy. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm not trying to judge the pad because I got a little bit of gravel overhang on the pad. This is my center stake. These are the edges. Okay, that's 20 feet from that stake to that stake, and that's 10 feet. So this tells me that my pad is centered. Okay, so the whole bin has to come back just a little bit. So I'm gonna twist it a little bit more and then I'm gonna push the whole thing back. And we should be dang close. I like these versus the, the case that comes right up and over. Okay. Horse flies are bad around here. Okay, need to check that. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. You're just making sure that the gap is about very similar. This one's looking maybe a little bit closer. I don't know. Maybe we're splitting hairs here. Mike, why don't you just get up there with the measuring tape? Ah, well, that's we don't have to be that close, you guys. Mike, why don't you run some uh, some twine? Oh, holy cow! You we're trying to win the Olympics here. <laughs> I'm not that worried about it. I could run some twine, center and edges, and so on and so forth, but I probably won't. Okay, we're pretty close. We're not quite, I gotta push the bin back just a little bit more. Wow, Mike, holy crap, man. You could make this a whole heck of a lot easier yourself. If you would have laid some twine down, you would have known where the center would have been. You know, that twine wouldn't have lasted very long when I start pushing on the skids. Cause yeah, 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 you could have twine there. You betcha you sure could. You would know where it is, yes, yes you would. But uh, that doesn't mean that your bin's just gonna get plopped right down. I'm gonna be doing the whole thing. I'm gonna do a twisty and twisty and uppy and downy and movie and round and round. You know what's gonna happen to your twine? You're gonna be back to the old eye. And besides, you don't wanna make life too easy on yourself. And this is how we do. You see, typically, um, we have somebody else here helping you line up. So you got the guy in the skid steer and then you got the eyeballer. I'm not the eyeballer, my older brother, he's the eyeballer, I'm just a baller. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shut up and get to work. All right.
we are dang close close enough that i better get the heck going because i gotta get back down there before they uh leave with that bin so i can pilot them so here we go round round two all right they already got the bin down oh they're gonna throw a couple straps over this one no messing around <laughs> Oh, Larry's funny. I'm like, oh, this one gets a strap. And he's like, well, I didn't like the route you took me. <laughs> the other one should add one too. And I'm like, oh, fair enough. I did tell him it was like just a quick little jaunt, like just down the road. So, uh, you know, my down the road and someone else's down the road is a little different. You know, my long move to someone else's long move is, again, I guess a little different. <laughs> See, I use this here uh, board to gauge my width when it comes to these ones. See, these other bins aren't sitting on skids, you see, so you can't do that. But once you get a bin with skids, then you just pre-cut your board and then you can keep them spaced all the way along. At least that's what we do at home. And that's what we're gonna attempt to do here. Okay, I'm gonna go and help him back up here. Sorry about the wind. I don't have Hammy here with me. <laughs> Larry's awesome. He's a good old family friend. He's known me since I was in diapers. <laughs> Then I'll uh, move it around here with the skid steer. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be a YouTuber. No. <laughs> no. And that's it. All right, as they take off, uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to square up this bin. And then uh, Mike is hitting the road, Jack, back on the road, live on the road, and uh, gotta get back to the South Farm. Basically what I'm saying is sayonara, I think. Uh, adios, uh, goodbye. Uh, that's all I got, that's all I got. <laughs> See you later. All right, yeah, of course we're back. Um, I just finished squaring this stuff off here. Because I know you guys have a few questions. Like, Mike, how big are these bins? Uh, these fert bins are around 4,000 bushels of uh, wheat you could put in it. Or I think you could fit it around 100 metric tons of urea or 125 metric tons of uh, phosphate. So, uh, again, depends on the density of the product that you're storing. Right, we'll put this up. 
So the trick is, when you're lining these up, is you want to be able to look down one set of posts on the white bins, not the steel ones, but the white ones, because that's what we're lining up these two, because they're the same size uh, foot. You want to look down and you just want to see one post. So we're close. If you look around this way, you can see the rest. If you look around this way, you can see the rest. And then in the center, you just want to see one post. That tells us that we're pretty dang straight. These skids are close. They might be just a little bit off, but then it kind of depends on whether we're going square with the world. So like I said, guys, you could sit here all day and try and move it a centimeter this way and a centimeter that way. We, on the other hand, do not have that kind of time. Oh, I'm going to have to pound that back in, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so that's the size of these. And then I have enough pad here uh, for two more. And then these bins, like I said before, these are just going to be our miscellaneous seed bins. So you could put some seed barley in one, some seed whatever in the other. Uh, those little ones are only 500 bushel. These ones are 2,300 bushels. And these ones would be like 4,000 bushels, right? This, do not be mistaken, this is not grain storage. Though I might clean these bins out and use it for some grain storage, uh, is not intended for grain storage. Grain storage will be grain bags. It will be grain bags for now. This is just fertilizer and seed storage. Don't be confused with fall grain storage. All right, guys, this time I'm out. You guys have yourself a good one. I'm heading back home. It takes me about, uh, well, it's 565 kilometers, so uh, give or take. Not counting P stops and, of course, some blizzard stops along the way. Adios, amigos.